we've had uh, about a 10,000 soldier force here in Florida, in Florida Army National Guard. About 7,000 of them have been mobilized federally since 9-11 for various missions uh, here in uh, Florida. You know, we guarded the airports. We've had uh, homeland defense missions here in the United States. We've had uh, we've been part of Operation Enduring Freedom, Operation Iraqi Freedom. We've been in uh, some contingency missions in Bosnia and Kosovo. So we have that mission. And the unique part of what we have, though, we're, we have a separate mission, a state mission, and that is to support the state of Florida in times of natural disaster whenever the governor uh, requires us. Even though it had been five years since a hurricane hit the state, the Florida National Guard trains hard for disaster relief. Lessons learned from Hurricane Andrew, until this year the highest damage cost storm in U.S. history, have been applied and refined. The presence mission we call right after a storm, which is to, to tell the citizens everything's fine, we'll, you know, we'll, we'll recover from this, we've done this before, and we have soldiers uh, patrolling the streets almost immediately. We use uh, 40 miles per hour uh, as our benchmark to say anything, uh, the winds drop below 40 miles per hour, we feel safe to let our soldiers uh, in most cases uh, patrol because 40 miles an hour generally is when bridges are closed here in Florida. And I joined the Guard partly to help out with hurricanes and stuff like that and for many years, I'd say many years, four or five years, there was, we didn't really do any of that. We went to Iraq, come back and then we were helping out with every hurricane which I, I enjoyed a lot. It was, it was different going from the streets of Baghdad with uh, M16s or on patrols or whatever to patrol in the streets of Pensacola. I enjoy what I do. Um, on the civilian side, I'm a firefighter. And, I, you know, me doing this, this, this military thing has always been in my blood. I enjoy it. I love it. Um, I've been accused of being a lifer. Guilty. Okay, I'm, I'm guilty. Uh, I've got 26 years of service now, military service. I don't see myself slowing down anytime soon. Uh, I, I, I just enjoy it. it. It's a lot of fun to me. And I've always said the day it stops being fun will be the day I retire and go home. When Hurricane Katrina hit, some National Guard units from Louisiana and Mississippi were deployed to Iraq. Units from other states helped fill the void stateside as guardsmen stationed in Iraq watched from a distance and worried about their homes and families. So I've spoken to my wife and family. She evacuated up to Baton Rouge, then moved uh, further north to Bastrop, Louisiana. I contacted my sister and she confirmed that everyone has got out of the city pretty safe. At this present moment, sir, I'm unaware of the conditions of my house. Whenever possible, individual guard and other service members from the affected areas were allowed to return stateside, some on assignment, some to address issues of home and family. For most, the reality of the destruction came as a shock. I don't think any of us really knew the magnitude of it. Um, TV doesn't accurately describe it. Uh, sit reps don't accurately describe it until you've seen it. Um, you don't understand the catastrophic nature of, of everything that happened here. So pretty well knew that there was going to be an emergency, and we turned around to get here as fast as we could. When recon continues, the shattered Gulf Coast faces another monster storm. By the third week of August, much of the initial relief work so critical during the first days after Hurricane Katrina hit was no longer necessary. Main roads were open, gas was again readily available, communications were improving, and power was slowly coming back online. But before people could really take stock, a new threat loomed on the horizon, a threat by the name of Rita. Rita's first stop on U.S. soil, the Florida Keys. Thankfully, the expected damage didn't happen. The Florida National Guard, on standby just in case, weren't even activated. At that time, what Rita would do next was the big question. Well, it's a little too early to be too specific because we're not sure, but uh, it's going to take about uh, the next three to four days for Rita to move across the Gulf of Mexico. And we anticipate strengthening, and it is possible that Rita will become a major hurricane uh, over the Gulf of Mexico before reaching either the coast of uh, northern Mexico, Texas, or even possibly Louisiana. Regardless of what might happen, people all along the Gulf Coast took action, 
using lessons learned in response to Katrina to help them plan for the possibility that another monster hurricane was on its way. Early operations in areas facing the greatest danger as a result of Rita focused on the evacuation of people. Those who could leave on their own did so. In Texas, more than a million people took to the roads. Meanwhile, those who couldn't leave on their own, mostly patients in area hospitals, were assisted by the military. This is the patient evacuation effort that took place in Beaumont, Texas. Meanwhile, Rita, now a Category 5 hurricane with sustained winds of around 155 miles an hour, continued on her path toward the Texas-Louisiana border. But she soon took a slight turn to the north, increasing the chances that New Orleans would again suffer. A new evacuation order was issued to the few who had returned to the city. There was simply no faith the battered levee system would hold. Lieutenant General Russell Honore, commander of military operations in response to Katrina, offered help and a cautionary note. People who don't have transportation need transportation. We're going to move them out. But we're not going back in the convention center or Superdome business. On Friday, September 23rd, rising water due to Hurricane Rita was again pouring through the patched industrial gate levee in New Orleans' hard-hit Ninth Ward. And by midday, water was again waist deep. Luckily, few people were home this time. Then in the early hours of September 24th, Hurricane Rita hit the coast right along the Texas-Louisiana state line. The Category 3 storm, with winds around 130 miles an hour, torrential rains, and a powerful storm surge, pounded coastal towns. With the morning light came the first glimpse at the destruction Rita left behind. Although the overall level of devastation was less than people feared, coastal areas did suffer. This is the destruction left behind in Cameron, Louisiana. The first three miles into Cameron, there's, there's just very few buildings left standing. Everything is, uh, is basically wiped out. 